Hello everyone in Oneness. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am Jessica Del Mar and this is part three of the Meridian system information that's been coming through. In my last video, part two, we spoke about the Meridian system energetic imprint, um, especially dealing with the 3D form. And in this video, we're going to talk about this light energetic imprint, um, more so in the 5D form. This meridian system that I am tapping into to present here is an energetic imprint brought forward from my tapping into this sort of energetic space of the physical form, the energetic form, and then in energy storage house um, vortex, which is that life force creation energy where everything in wholeness exists, which includes, much like yin and yang, both dark and light, but a balance of these creation energies. And in this greater sphere, this vortex of creation energy, which exists outside of the physical and the energetic bodies of the physical form, um, it is then pulled into the energetic and physical form. And then cycled through the flow of your energy through these meridian points. I'll put a link to part two below in the description. Be sure to watch part one and part two before watching this video because I won't get too much into what I spoke about in those two videos and there's a lot of information that layers on top of each other. So in order to really understand this video, go ahead and watch part one and part two first. Okay, so this is what I went over in the last video, part two. Basically, this energetic imprint came through, which is kind of like a pattern for repetition in terms of our connection to our greater meridian system um, and our greater physical form connected to our energetic form, connected to um, the greater layers of energy and vortexes that exist seemingly outside of this energetic and physical form in this reality. All is sort of within this paper or canvas of the flower of life. And for the meridian system energetic imprint um, connected to 5D, it showed me this overlaying pattern of the fingerprint of God, the tree of life, and the Merkaba that is basically birthed from the overlay of the fingerprint of God and the tree of life um, overlaying on top of the flower of life. But again, I speak more in detail about this energetic imprint in part two of this video series. So moving forward, we spoke about how it connects to this greater yin and yang, um, infinite toroidal vortex of life force energy, this sort of storage tank of, of both dark and light creation energies in complete balance. And this is what filters into the energetic form and into the physical form to be realized and um, physically utilized and manifested for us in our physical, tangible reality. Essentially, it, in what was shown to me, is more like a sphere of energy that surrounds us, if you want to think of, of the physical form in within a sphere of energy. Um, and it sort of rotates in this very um, layered way where there's the infinity um movement of energy and there is that greater sphere of energy and then there are also these sort of portals um, and vortex openings that filter this greater sphere of energy into the meridian system or into this energetic imprint which uh, connects to our physical form. Then we spoke about how it connected here in the cranial nerves. Just, you know, synchronistically, I came across the cranial nerves of the brain and how this energetic imprint perfectly aligns to um, all of these different nerves and how the center Merkaba is um, basically the center pineal gland um, space, I'm assuming. Um, I don't know that much about the brain or these nerves, um, but it, it kind of seems that way. And then we spoke about the 3D form and how the, the Merkaba center 
of this energetic imprint is that zero point equilibrium balanced state of the energetic imprint and also how in the 3d form there are these portals of energy in the root and the crown chakra that pulls in the energy of this um, greater sphere of creation energy life force energy into the physical form so first this greater sphere of yin and yang creation life force energy opens into the energetic form of the body through the Merkaba center at the heart in the 3D form. And then from the energetic body, it's pulled into the physical form through these portal doorways of the crown and the root chakra. And we go in way further detail about this 3D form in part two as well. So now let's get into the 5D form. The 5D form is a little bit more complex. And like I was speaking about in the last video, it was showing me all of these different layers of micro and macro. So we have this energetic imprint as sort of like that very, very micro sense that everything is kind of stemmed and projected from, if you will. Um, it related it to two cells fusing together. So the God fingerprint reflected upon itself is it was shown to me kind of like as two cells merging together fusing together and the merkaba that is created is that nucleus of the two cells merging together and what had come through in the last video is sort of this deconstructed reality that's happening right now everything in 3d is basically being deconstructed if you think of food how you know this one dish can be deconstructed so that we can see all the different elements and ingredients that make up that one dish um, or rather see that dish in a whole new way in a deconstructive way in a way that challenges your perception of that original dish. Our 3D belief systems, our thoughts, our patterns, the programs, that was all sort of packaged in our belief, in our um, thoughts, in our mind. And so all of that needs to be unpackaged basically. And we're in this deconstructed reality where we're opening up all of those 3D thoughts, patterns, beliefs, programs, seeing and laying it all out. It's in this deconstruction um, process, it's shifting our mindset. It's shifting the way that we, we saw what we once believed in. It's shifting the way that we are experiencing in the now moment what we once believed in. It's shifting everything. And so then the movement further into 5D is about taking all of this deconstructed thoughts, patterns, beliefs, programs, and then repackaging it in a way that better aligns to where we are and where we're moving in terms of our shifting belief system further into a 5D belief system, which is essentially a more open field of creation, a more open field of thought, which then everything is created from thought. So like I was saying, going back, um, everything's kind of being shown to me in all of these different layers of micro and macro. And then you can either think of it as going further inward or viewing with that greater perspective, either or it's, it's a micro or a macro of, of the other. Again, going back to this um, whole perspective, as you go inward, you go further and further, you tap further and further into the source within and into this even more greater perspective, even though on the outside it may feel like this is the greater perspective, but really the further inward you go, the more you are able to tap into and connect with in the greater aspect and perspective of all that is. And so we can see that greater aspect, the greater perspective here in the meridian system of the 3D form. And now we're going to widen our perspective even more into the 5D form. It's like the 5D form is able to now access, it's, it's more open to accessing a, a greater field in this um, flower of life canvas. Whereas the 3D form was not as open to accessing all of these many different points 
or energetic portals within the body. So it was limited in, in what it could access. And so now in the 5D form, there's so many more portals that are available to be utilized. And the 5D form is able to receive that greater energy and move and allow for the movement of that greater energy. So as you can see in the 5D form, it's now these the energetic imprint um, stacked, this energetic imprint stacked on top of each other that moves through the entire body. So in the 5D form, the chakras are no longer the focus of the energy flow. The focus is on the vortexes and portal doorways and meridian points that open that greater life force energy into the body. So the flower of life, it's a little bit hard to see in this image. Um, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. So for this 5D form, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more to the top part of the physical form, even though the energy moves down, it moves up, it moves outward to the sides to encompass your entire form. So what came through is that there are Merkabas, as you can see um, from that original um, imprint, there was that star, that Merkaba, which now opens up into many different places in the body. In the physical form alone, there are one, two, three, four Merkabas that open up. There are um, other Merkabas that open up here in the leg area or, or below the root, but because they are in the center of the body and the legs open up past, it's like it doesn't connect. It doesn't connect in the physical form, um, these Merkabas um, below the root. And we'll talk about that later. But basically in the physical form, there are four Merkaba centers. What came through is that each of the stars, each of these Merkabas in the body, open a heaven on earth. There are four Merkabas in the physical form. Heaven is not a place, but an inner peace. The Merkaba star in the head space opens up peace of mind. And this, of course, connects back to the 12 cranial nerves. And when we see the imprint of this energetic 5D meridian light system on top of these 12 cranial nerves, the Merkaba star is right in the center of the brain space. The Merkaba star in this area, and this area really connects the throat and the heart. This opens up peace of heart or peace in the heart, which therefore opens up peace in expression. The star, or the Merkaba star that opens up in this area, which is the solar plexus area, that solar plexus center, opens up peace in the self, or peace in self power, basically, which opens a very, very strong I am presence within. The last star, the fourth star, connects the sacral and root areas, and this opens up peace in the body or peace in the physical form, including all the duality and emotions that come with it. Opening up these four heavens on earth opens up peace and balance within. It does not open low vibration, but opens a balance in your emotions. Heaven is energy of peace and not energy of struggling. Opening up the four heavens on earth is like opening a wave in your experience that is always there for you to catch so that even if you may sway or lose your balance or ebb and flow, it is an infinite energy wave that supplies the form with infinite peace and balance. The wave of inner peace will be there as your flotation device. Opening the four heavens on earth is up to the individual person, not clouded by judgment. Judgment prevents heaven on earth from opening for you in your experience. God does not judge or punish. 
you in your physical form is the only one judging and punishing, preventing you from opening and receiving your entrance to heaven on earth. And you in your source realized power to create will open the doors to heaven on earth to enjoy the fruit of divine labor and love. Heaven on earth is connected to 5D and beyond. And what came through is that individuals who do not have a place on heaven on earth, meaning they don't match up with that frequency, will find home on a frequency of earth planet that better matches the wave of vibration that they are riding. The split into 5D is just one split that's happening, but there are many layers of the cake, many layers of vibration and frequency that a person moves through to ultimately attain the frequency of opening the four heavens on earth in the physical experience. It's kind of showing me like a ladder that people climb and you move through different layers in order to finally get to the frequency of opening up these four Merkabas within the physical form to open up the energy of essentially heaven on earth, which is just divine inner peace um, associated with these four open Merkabas. I asked, do those experiencing heaven on earth coexist with other people or other layers of those experiencing other frequency waves. And what came through is yes, all planes of vibration and frequency may coexist together upon Gaia, depending how close or far the frequencies are in relationship to each other. But for the most part, the vibrational layers overlap. However, waves of a feather flock together basically meaning those who exist in similar vibrations will experience a similar type of reality in co-creation together. Now we're going to open up how, you know, this yin and yang, infinite toroidal vortex of energy that is pulled into first the energetic body of the form and then the physical form, how this plays into that 5D form. As you'll see, it looks very different from the 3D um, connection to its yin and yang um, toroidal sphere of energy. So it's all connected to each of the imprints and ultimately it kind of forms this sort of tunnel of energy that the person is in essentially. What came through is the yin and yang sphere like storage tank of energy in the 3D form now opens into a portal or a tunnel-like storage tank of energy in the 5D form. It opens more avenues for the yin and yang energy to open into the energetic body, meaning that, like we are talking about here, within each of the Merkabas is an equilibrium point, a center um, point of balance or zero point center that opens this energy, this life force energy, into the energetic form of the body. So in the 5D form, because there are more Merkabas held within the body, or, or rather opened within the body, then it offers more points for this life force energy to open into the energetic form of the body. However, what came through is that the solar plexus Merkaba, this is the center that is the strongest vortex of the energetic body in form because it holds the I am presence. In the 3D form, it was the heart center that opened up. This was sort of that equilibrium zero point um, point or vortex point that opened the um, life force energy into the energetic body of the form. But in 5D, as you can see here, it is the solar plexus area. This is um, sort of the powerhouse of all of the vortexes of the body. What came through is that in the 3D form, the powerhouse mind, because there are three minds, there is the brain mind, the heart mind, and the gut mind. And in 3D, the 3D form's powerhouse mind was the brain mind. The 4D form's powerhouse mind was the heart mind, 
And the 5D forms powerhouse mind is the gut or the solar plexus mind. The 5D solar plexus opens balanced energy of the yin and yang storage tank and takes over as the powerhouse structure. The 5D solar plexus um, Merkaba center opens up this greater yin and yang flow of energy from an even greater macro or micro, however, you, however you're looking at it. Um, but this is a greater perspective than what we're looking at here in this perspective. Now we're panning out and looking at it in an even greater perspective. And so we see an even greater um, access to an even greater um storage tank of creation life force energy um, represented here as this um, you can barely see it but it's this yin and yang symbol in the background and in this greater perspective panning out we have the the merkaba in the solar plexus area as that ultimate um, zero point state equilibrium balanced vortex of energy to open for the body um, connected to this greater flow of energy, which essentially opens, um, as you can see here, we have a throat doorway and a root doorway here with those dots of the greater um, yin and yang symbol, but I'm not gonna get into this because as we can, we can continue opening our perspective further and further and further in that micro and macro. But this is just kind of showcasing the many, many different layers of the energetic body going on um, all at the same time, just in different micro and macro views. So what came through in terms of this greater perspective is that the solar plexus opens this greater um, energy center, this greater balanced energy center, because even in 5D, the other Merkaba centers, the mind, the heart and throat space and the root and um, sacral space are still open to duality. It's still open because we are still living in a duality-based reality, even in 5D. However, the 5D solar plexus area or solar plexus center, the Merkaba star, is um, or it holds the space for equilibrium in the body despite um, the duality that still may open in the body. It still allows for the filtration of um, balance in the body despite duality. What also came through is that the way that the body utilizes this yin and yang creation energy, vortex, field, um, storage tank, toroidal field, whatever this is, is always it always has to be um balanced in the body so regardless you know balance can be seen in many different perspectives so in the 3d form what was happening is that um most 3d forms are imbalanced and it's pulling in creation energy this yin and yang energy into the energetic body of the person but again through that heart center and if the heart is imbalanced or it's not open and it's closed and it has resistance and blockage and emotional trauma and stuff like that then it's pulling in this creation yin and yang energy from that lens from that filter into the physical form and so for a lot of people they're either pulling in too much yin or too much yang and that's filtering through their form so the person in the physical form um, recognizes the imbalance and therefore there's a lot of compensation occurring. For example, if there's too much young energy in the physical form, then the person oftentimes compensates um, in one way or another to bring in more yin energy um, and the same way for the opposite if there's too much yin energy then the person compensates trying to bring in more yang energy or physical things in the body become manifested or uh, physical symptoms happen and occur in response to the imbalance of energy but at the same time, there has to be that balance. So if there, it's it's not that the physical form can have a hundred percent yin and a hundred percent yang. There has to be 
a balance between the two. So it's possible that the form can have 80% yin and 20% yang, or the vice versa. As we see in the symbol, there is this dot that opens up the energy of the of the opposite into um, the energy of itself. So the dark side has energy of light that opens up into the dark and the light side has energy of dark that opens up into the light. So there's always that balance. However, like I said, in the physical form, if the energy is not balanced in the physical form or in the form, then the person in 3D usually would go towards physical um, desires to try to compensate for the imbalanced energy. So a lot of times it was physical desires such as addictions, many different addictions, drugs, alcohol, etc., um, food, um, um, it goes into the whole emotional thing too in, in terms of like having the emotions come up for you to let you know in your awareness that something is missing um, and many other physical desires and forms in where the person can compensate for the imbalanced energy but when you're pulling from physical energy and your physical reality and your physical desires then that doesn't necessarily make up for the lack or the imbalanced energy in that greater life force energy that you're holding. It's not the same thing, but the person in the physical form is, try is, is grasping at straws to try to create some sort of balance within without really being conscious and aware of that. In the 5D form, what was shown to me is that the greater yin and yang energy opens up into the body in that solar plexus Merkaba in a more balanced way. So the Merkaba in the solar plexus is already open and able to receive the greater yin and yang energy in a more balanced state, in a more balanced way. However, the physical form is still susceptible to duality because the physical form still exists in a duality-based reality, which 5D is still duality-based. It's just that if the physical form experiences any sort of duality, which can create a tipping of the scale of the greater yin and yang energy or the greater life force energy, for example, duality, emotions, um, hot and cold. There's a lot of forms of duality that can tip the scale. Um, but what was shown to me is that in the 5D form, the meridian system kind of comes together to help balance the energy. Meaning that if, for example, um, the example that they showed me was I was out on a walk in the snow and I was receiving this download, basically... For example, if you are cold, then you're going to try to compensate to bring in the opposite energy in order to achieve more balance. In the 3D form, the person would bring in physical desires or physical something to try to compensate. But in the 5D body, what happens is that greater connection to the life force storage tank brings in the energy that you're lacking or the energy that needs balancing out. So if you are experiencing intense cold, then you will pull from that greater yin and yang storage tank of energy, life force energy, into the physical form more warmth or more hot or heat in order to help continue or maintain the equilibrium of energy. Same thing goes with heat. And so I'm going to go out on a limb here to say that even in different types of weather in the 5D form, the person is able to uh, hold and maintain a, a very balanced state of temperature, I want to say. Um, that came through really strongly in that download being out in the snow and being not as cold as I would have been before. But, you know, it doesn't mean that you're going to go out without any clothes on in the snow. It's just that, you know, you do what you need to do. Put on those layers, put on the boots and the scarves and the hats. But your body itself is going to, it's like it runs its own system, much like the heart pumps blood on its own. Your connection to the greater life force energy storage tank is 
a, a direct connection now in a in a more balanced way so that you're receiving the equilibrium the of, of energy that you need when you need it so it's going to feed in the energy that you're lacking in order to balance out whatever you need balancing but it's all part of the greater ability to manifest as well so if you're lacking energy and you're conscious that you're lacking either the yin or the yang then through your ability to manifest you draw in that lacking energy to then open more equilibrium and balance versus you and your physical form needing to compensate for that energy in your physical surroundings and desires another thing is the balancing of the energy is just something that occurs on the ascension journey um, looking back i can clearly see the balancing of energy going on and this also includes shadow work it includes everything that a person goes through in order to raise frequency it's part of the ebb and the flow of trying to tune and hone your form's ability to equalize and balance energy within and so it's like looking back, I can see a period of time where it was very, it was a lot of yin or feminine energy in the body, and then a period of time where it was a lot of yang energy or masculine energy in the body. And what that does is it really brings out a lot of things for you, first to recognize the imbalance, and then also have you in your, in your journey try to bring into balance um, what is out of balance. The Ascension journey, especially in 4D, is very much about riding those waves of up and down, yin and yang, in order to understand what equilibrium balance is, essentially, because it's the body's way of trying to figure out, you know, what is north, south, east, and west, in order to understand what that balance state is of just being, um... You know, once you have all of your directions all set and recognized. And moving into 5D, it's just like you already know all the directions. You already know the ebb and the flow. And now, knowing all of that, you understand what it means. You understand what inner peace means. You understand what balance means. You understand what it means to be in that zero point. The eye of the storm and utilize your duality for what for the experience because duality um, creates expansion for you and your ability to play with it but also not get stuck in it because you don't have to anymore you can always return back to balance back to the zero point equilibrium um, in order to experience and expand for your greater good without being pulled down Going back to this perspective of this tunnel or portal of, of greater life force energy that opens into the body, um, it, you know, if we take a look at only the, the life force energy, the yin and yang energy, um, what it was kind of showing me is it's not just a tunnel, but it is, it takes shape almost like, um, a spiral, if you will. And even the spiral, you know, this is a very flat, um, simplistic form, if you will, because there is movement, there's flow, there is ebb and flow. And so I would even consider the um, solar plexus Merkaba as opening something like as big as this. Um, and so it would be a spiral of energy that opens up and then contracts again, almost like the whole timeline spiral of energy that we spoke about a long time ago, but I'll put that video link below. Um, so even this may not necessarily be as accurate as, um, as, as information um, in terms of what could be shown to me on a macro level. And, and now it's kind of connecting in terms of this and how if the solar plexus area opens a vortex of life force energy that's a lot grander, then I think it means that this is kind of the the most expansive point in that spiral of energy. So, so I just did this really quickly, so this is absolutely not accurate, but um, sort of to represent what I was just talking about, how, you know, we have a greater energy flow in the mid-center solar plexus area, and then 
um, like a spiral of energy. It just um, so it starts at the the crown center and and opens up into the solar plexus and then um, contracts again as you move into the root. That's a possibility. Um, and it's kind of showing me that, or it could be just a different layer of the greater energy that we're tapping into, but that's very complex. So I'm not going to go too much into it, but point being is that this becomes the energy flow that you're tapping into in the greater yin and yang, um, life force energy is more like a spiral of energy that essentially also contains within it, um, energy flow that works in that um, infinity spiral as well going back to this motion within the greater spheres of energy that spiral throughout the body again it's very complex there's so much happening um, but I just wanted to share sort of what I'm sensing and seeing and tapping into which isn't always the easiest to explain or even put into an illustration but I do my best. And then finally, on an even grander, grander, grander perspective is kind of what it showed me if you want to look. Um, maybe even from the crown, like if you're looking from an aerial perspective um, f downward at the physical form, you know, we can see the flower of light as a grid in the background behind um, the physical form in this perspective but from the top perspective it also shows me that what's going on with all of these you know spiraling energies and you know energies within the spirals and the infinity energies and all of that is an even greater grid of the flower of life energy um, looking downwards as well so it's almost like a sphere of, of flower of light pattern in and of itself. So it's showing me the physical form and the physical form is within a sphere and the sphere is entirely made up of flower of light um, pattern. And then even within this sphere in the density, if you will, within the sphere is all the the different patterns such as this energetic imprint, the meridian system, the spirals, um, the infinity flows of energy, everything is within this sphere. So this illustration is probably completely wrong um, because, but this is just kind of showing us, you know, that greater grander perspective of a very flat version of a, a flower of light sphere. Um, in our in that greater perspective but that's what needed to come through for this video I know that this is a lot of information but there's a reason why I need to present this information um, even if I may not fully grasp um, everything for what it is I'm just interpreting from my perspective at this moment um, and like I said things can open up uh, especially after I share things tend to open up a lot more or new things expand or add to or edit or whatever um, so we'll see how it things unfold and I do know that I'm tapping more into these meridian points especially on the body and how to utilize these meridian points how to work with them um, how to open them up how to bring in more light to the meridian field um, how to activate and integrate energy um, just kind of being open to whatever needs to come through regarding this meridian system and like i said in my last video there is a lot of assistance that we can utilize in order to help open up um, light in this in the 5d meridian system um, such as sound frequencies um, 639 hertz and even if you want to go um, even higher 963 hertz are really good um, frequencies to utilize but because they are such higher frequencies some people may not necessarily be ready to um, receive that tuning into those higher vibrations so you might want to start off slowly and tune to 528 hertz vibration and then when you feel comfortable there you know nothing's coming up for you nothing too significant because when you're tuning to higher frequencies 
things that no longer serve, things that cannot tune to those higher frequencies are going to be released um, however they're meant to be released in your physical reality. So as you become comfortable and at peace and in balance with 528 hertz, then begin to integrate 639 hertz, and then eventually you can open up into 963 hertz. Um, and besides sound, there is the energy of gratitude, which is really lifting us up into higher vibrations. Energy of gratitude opens up energy in so many different ways. So you can bring forth gratitude into the things that you consume, your water, drinks, food, anything you put onto your body. Um, opening up energy of gratitude will open up and raise the frequency of whatever you're consuming or putting onto your body because then it supports your physical forms um, shift into higher frequencies as well and kind of offers that little, uh, little push as well. Going out, connecting to Earth Gaia really helps to align your meridian points, align the, align the energy flow with that of Earth Gaia because everything is moving. This flower of life grid is moving together. Um, and so Earth Gaia's flower of life grid meridian points are shifting. Um, and as Gaia's meridian points are shifting, so are your meridian points. So connecting to Earth Gaia, it will really help to open that energy flow up for you. Movement in the body is another um, big thing coming through, such as yoga, tai chi, qigong, um, many different ways to move the energy in the body. Um, even just going for a run, exercising, going for a swim, allow energy to move through the body. It'll help support the shifts of the meridian system. Another thing I want to clarify is that this view and perspective of the 5D meridian system is also available here in the 3D form, but it's not necessarily easily accessed from the 3D form because it does not align to the frequency of this perspective. Again, everything is just a micro and macro perspective of the greater integration in this in this um, flower of light grid and how the different um, sacred geometric forms come together to integrate with your physical form. And so this still exists on a plane, maybe on a different layer than what the 3D form can access. And this here is the layer of vibrational makeup that the 3D form can access. So um, that's really all it is. One big thing that's been coming through for me is utilizing earth oils, essential oils, which are the purest form of nature itself. And especially in working with this meridian grid system, the guides have really been working with me to physically use certain types of oils and working with these meridian points on the physical form. So that's still unfolding and I'm still working with it and tapping into that realm. So we'll see how that unfolds. But the power and the frequency of earth oils and essential oils is such a huge boost to the system. It's such a huge boost to your energetic and physical field in connection to each other that really helps, um, again, like create a boost, a power boost of energy um, that pushes you further into this 5D light meridian system and opening up these different uh, meridian points and vortexes and portals within the body because it helps to align you into those higher frequencies that these earth oils and essential oils holds. I'm sure that there is going to be another video regarding the 5D light meridian system and these meridian points, maybe how to work with it, but we'll see how it unfolds. In the meantime, I'll give you some time to integrate this information and this energy because a lot of energy came through in this video, in this transmission. So allow for whatever to happen. It's like pinging into your meridian system. It's pinging into your connection and your tethering into that 5D space where all of this is held. And again, like I said in my last video, it's not 
you moving into 5D New Earth. It's you bringing 5D New Earth into your experience and manifesting it for yourself. And this is just part of that process. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Together with you in oneness, I'm Jessica Del Mar. Oneness and love be with you.